All right, y'all. So last month I told y'all how I was going to start shedding light on the healthcare system and the history of healthcare. And so I'm finally going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> and first I'm going to start discussing um, about how hospitals and pharmaceutical companies take advantage of insurance companies and sick patients for profit. All of this information can be found in this book, An American Sickness, How Healthcare Became a Big Business and How You Can Take It Back. It's by Elizabeth Rosenthal and so far it's been pretty interesting and I'm just going to share um, information with it as I go along. So back to my story. Um, I want to start talking about, first of all, I want to start talking about how medical treatments and procedures can range in price point depending on whether you get it from a community clinic or an academic hospital. So case in point. There was this 53-year-old high school chemistry teacher up in New York, and he suffered from psoriatic arthritis, which is basically a disease where your immune system attacks the skin and causes rashes, and also attacks the joints and causes crippling arthritis. It's like super painful. And so his condition was so bad that even high doses of prednisone um, did not stop his severe problems, and it made it and he was still having joint issues that left him unable to walk or work because he had to stand up for hours since he was a chemistry teacher. So um, this was about like 15, 20 years ago. But anywho, there was a new arthritis drug that just hit the market and it was called Remicade. And so his rheumatologist said that he would be a good candidate for it. And so it was, it worked wonders for him. It made him feel normal again. He could live his life. He can stand up and not have any issues. And so every six weeks, he would have to um, get these infusions. And so luckily he had good insurance because of the school he worked for. It was like a really high up high school um, up in New York. And so the cost for each visit for that infusion treatment, Mind you, he was getting this from like a community a clinic or something, um, an outpatient clinic. That's where he was getting from. He was getting it from an outpatient clinic. And so the cost of that procedure was $19,000 each visit. $19,000 every six weeks. But luckily, he has good insurance. So um, he paid nothing out of pocket and his insurance, Emblem Health, took care of everything. So... This was all fine and dandy, but after, I don't know how long, but his rheumatologist moved practices. She asked her patients to just go to the hospital that she was working at, which was like this New York, I don't remember the name of it, but when she moved, he had to go there too. He had to go to the, he had to go to a different medical center. So this was all well, cool and fine. He got, he was still getting his treatments. He thought it was cool because they were open on weekends so he wouldn't have to get a substitute teacher so he can go get his infusions and then they were open later at night when he got that bill the price jumped from nineteen thousand dollars to ninety eight thousand six hundred dollars yeah i don't know if you okay that's crazy expensive and it didn't stop there his next visit jumped from like 98k to $132,791. And then it stayed around like 132k for like a couple more times for the exact same treatment. He wasn't getting anything different. It was all the same dose. He stayed the same hours. Like nothing was changing. And so it got to the point that he he went and filed a complaint and was trying to figure out what the issue was and they just kept giving him the runaround um they were just saying well you know why would you worry about it because your health insurance is paying for everything so you don't have to pay for it and then they said hope oh, get this you are a larger person so you were going to have to get a larger dose so that's probably why you're paying more the Sorry. Anywho, <laughs> so um, that was some BS. Turns out after some digging, the medical center he switched to actually had financial interest in the drug Remicade and they stood to gain 
um, potential um, profit um, every time the drug was used. So if you're charging $98,000, $132,000 for a service or a treatment that's originally that priced elsewhere 19k you're probably going to get that profit one of the inventors of the drug he shared his patient he shared his patent royalties to that medical center in gratitude for helping him establish his career and since he was a cuz he was an immigrant from Slovakia and so do it sold the rights and royalties but in the contract they would still receive payment from pro payment from the profits if the drug um rose above if the payments went above a certain undisclosed bar so yeah they were just essentially making sure that they were meeting their quota by charging those extra prices so they can get profit at the end of the year so the kicker is that since he was a high school teacher that meant that all the residents in his area were paying a portion of it with this tax dollars so your tax dollars are helping these medical companies profit off of your health yeah and so these days our treatment follows not scientific guidelines but the logic of commerce in an imperfect and poorly regulated market whose big players spend more on lobbying than actual defense contractors. And so much of our healthcare is driven by financial incentives to order more and to do more and to default to the most expensive treatment to whatever ails you. Because at the end of the day, it's about the money. So, I just said all this because some people don't have the luxury of having good insurance and some people are tied to jobs that they hate that's probably exacerbating or continuing the issue at hand just so, and they're staying there just for the insurance. <sighs> yeah, we have to find another way for this. Um, yeah, I thought that was super interesting. So, yeah, hope this helps.